This show is produced by the Hartman Media Company. For more information and links to all our great podcasts, visit HartmanMedia.com. Welcome to the Young Wealth Show, where you'll truly learn how to make, spend, and invest money for an awesome life. Get the real life stuff that wasn't part of your school curriculum. Young Wealth gives you innovative new ways of dealing with your finances, as well as the skills and tools you're going to need to survive and be successful out on your own. Let the Young Wealth Show be your GPS to take you from clueless to clued in. Here's your host, Jason Hartman, with Young Wealth. It's my pleasure to welcome Jeff Cook. He is co-founder and CEO of Meet Me and the Meet Group. That's a NASDAQ uh, stock, and the uh, symbol is Meet, social dating and live streaming company with a $400 million plus market cap, doing some interesting things in the space to take it to the next level. Jeff, welcome. How are you? I'm very good. Thanks for having me. Good. Where are you located? We are in New Hope, Pennsylvania. Um, I live in Princeton, but uh, I don't know if you know New Hope too well. It's a little town on the Delaware River. Good stuff. There's a lot going on and you know, has been a lot going on for years and in using the internet to connect people, a lot of social media companies out there, a lot of even more dating apps out there. What are you doing in the space and, uh, in, you know, kind of what's different? Where is this going? Sure. So we have uh, about four and a half million users that log into our apps every day and, and a little over 15 million every month. And so we have a portfolio of social dating meeting apps. And what we're doing, I think that's different, and because I think you're right, you know, it's a very crowded space. But I, I think what we're doing that's different, and we haven't seen others do it, at least not yet, is uh, live streaming video and really combining that with dating. And what I mean by live streaming video is you're broadcasting out to either one or, or many people at any given time. And when we added this to our product, in I guess the, when we first added it, we started working on it in, in late 2016 and, and started rolling it out all throughout 2017. And when we started monetizing it, which was really only Q4 of 17, we grew from zero of, of revenue from live streaming to 80 plus million in the span of about 16 months. And that revenue growth, of course, was great to see. But the reason it was coming was because our users uh, really adopted it and, and they were really engaging with, with the platform. And I think live streaming video is just one of the reasons I think it works so well in dating is because dating users have come to expect all the apps to be more or less the same. They're all flat profiles. The question is, well, is this person even authentic? You know, is this, is this a picture taken yesterday or 10 years ago? Um, is this even the person in question? You know, it's hard to fake video. Video also gives you glimpses of personality that you don't get sure. yeah, um, yeah. any other way. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's interesting because oddly, years ago, I mean... <laughs> I remember the those old fashioned dating companies and seeing sitcoms depicting like someone would go in and make a video and people would go into an office. Uh, I don't even know what those were called. Those, you know, way back in like the eighties. Uh, but I remember hearing about those companies, you know, and um, and you know, you'd go in and make like a little intro video, and then it's you know, it was it was or still is used in job interviews and our job applications and things like that. So it's odd to me, actually. This seems so obvious. I mean, all the social, the big social media companies are using live stream, you know, Facebook, Instagram. Why doesn't Match.com, Tinder, why don't all the rest of them use video? That's kind of actually seems like such an obvious thing. Where it came from, where we first got the idea from it was actually from China. So if, if you go to China, this everyone... I, I, I just got back from China, interestingly. Oh, oh really? Yeah. So, so we, we were in China in 2016. I've, uh -huh. of course, been there since. But we noticed kind of the rise of live streaming while I was in Beijing and Shanghai. Mm -hmm. And there's these big, very, very large live streaming companies. If you're looking for ground zero kind of in, in the live streaming market, you have to go to Beijing because you, you have um, YY, Yijibwa, Inca, Momo. You, know, you have all of these. And that's just to name a few. And these are all multi-billion dollar, you know, massive companies that pour, you know, enormous amounts of R&D. And we noticed kind of this trend coming from China. We said, look, let's see if it works for our audience, because we knew that our, our app was kind of like the Momo app in many different ways before it added video. And we said, well, maybe it'll work for us, too. And it did, is the short answer. As far as like why isn't others like Match Group and Tinder and so forth 
getting into it, you know, I think uh, what I've found about live streaming video is that it's an all in bet, right? So like, you have to bet the whole company to pull off a live streaming video platform. And the reason is because, you know, you have to have hundreds of moderators, you have to have good AI trying to find, uh, you know, untoward content, content you don't want, you have to build the whole platform to begin with, uh, you have to have you know good bandwidth and, and, and keep your costs down on the streaming aspect. And then you have to monetize it all. It's a pretty significant project. It's not the sort of thing you put one or two development teams on. You know, we, we have 17 of our you know, 21 teams on our live streaming solution. And so it, like, unless you're willing to put 200 engineers on it, you know, it's not the sort of thing that you dabble in. Okay, so, you know, the world of, it's so funny because when it started, there was like this little bit of stigma attached to online dating. But now, so many of my married friends met online, a huge percentage. It's just the way people meet nowadays. Mo- I say it might almost be uh, mostly if, it, you know, if it's not an online dating app, but maybe just a general social media platform like Facebook. And Zuckerberg actually said he was going to aim Facebook in the direction of making it more of a dating platform. Uh, I remember him saying that a while ago. I don't know that anything's happened. But people are definitely craving connection. Everybody's so busy. They're finding it hard to, you know, meet in the offline world, uh, obviously, with all of its stuff. Kind of where is it going? Where do you see the future of all of this stuff? Uh, And specifically, virtual reality and augmented reality uh, being the next evolution of video. Yeah, it's interesting. So, so I think if you look at you know, where it's coming, we, we obviously think it's going to get more and more authentic. Like some of the, the trends in dating today, you know, you have companies like Hinge and you have companies like Bumble. You know, Hinge is owned by Match and Bumble basically owned by a, a Russian um, Badoo. And you have these brands that are all about kind of imp- increasing what's shared on the profile and trying to get more interesting data out of a user to make the profiles richer. Like I think a couple years ago, profiles could just be a collection of photos and some facts. And now they're they're trying to get some more personality to them. I kind of view that as almost of of a piece with video is also part of that. It's like, how do you get a better glimpse of somebody through, you know, whatever their digital manifestation is? And so I think you'll see more of that as it relates to video in particular, you know, one of the drawbacks of a video is uh, this from somebody you know deep in the video is that you know, not everyone wants to broadcast, right? So many more people will want to view a video than want to broadcast. Right. So okay. if you're looking for mass appeal, you know, another maybe crasser way of putting it is, you know, like a lot of these multi-billion or even multi-hundred billion dollar companies get their value out of monetizing minutes that you were normally not monetizable. Like you are on the toilet and now you can check your Facebook or your Tinder. Video is not the sort of thing you can do on a toilet, right? <laughs> so right. I guess you can, you, but maybe you, you shouldn't. Prepare, <laughs> yeah. Maybe you feel the need to, to get made up for, you know, obviously people come in this in different ways. Okay. okay. So how do you solve the problem? I get that. I get the problem. What do you do? I think you, you come at it with formats that don't require you to only be one-on-one. So we do have a one-on-one product in the works. But when we addressed video, we started with a one-to-many just because of this dynamic that more people would rather view. We actually hope that more and more people will want to stream. In any given day, we have about 130,000 streamers and maybe 900,000 or so viewers. We'd like to see you know, ever more streamers um, show up. Now, you asked about VR, AR. AR is already here. You know, We're deep on inside of the video stream what we're working on right now is so if you make a heart gesture with your hands you can imagine hearts em- emitting from your hands and it looks like you know that you have almost a superpower if you you know you put a thumb up maybe your your thumb catches on fire so picking out these gestures you know if you put both eyes up some effect happens mm-hmm. gesture based ar is already kind of here on the vr side i find that really interesting i've worn you know, an oculus goggle i've demoed sitting in a room across from someone as if on a virtual date. The problem with it right now is just adoption, right? It's still relatively small. You you need a lot of female adoption, frankly, in order to make a dating app on VR work. Okay, so yeah, the females need to adopt it for it to work on both sides of the equation, as as you mentioned. So the one-to-many video streaming, but that's just like uh, Facebook, right? Or is it is what makes it work is the fact that people are specifically there for dating purposes versus 
general social media or business. Most of the stuff you see on Facebook is really business related, it seems like. So I think that's right. I mean, of course, Facebook does have live streaming, you know, Instagram, others. You know, I think that the difference is, and the way I like to think of it is that people have multifaceted personalities and they use brands to express different aspects of their personality. So you might be your professional self on LinkedIn and post all this stuff that has to do with your conferences or your podcast sure. or whatever, what have you. And on Facebook, at least if you use it like me, um, you're posting pictures that you maybe want your family to see, you know, my, my children, things of that nature. Mm-hmm. On Tinder, owned by Madge, or on the Meet Group suite of apps, you're posting your kind of bar, your coffee house, your, your more maybe outgoing personality. Mm-hmm. And you don't typically want these things to mix, right? So Facebook tends to get in a lot of trouble whenever there is some kind of mixing, when there is some sharing that's kind of unanticipated. That doesn't feel natural. And so I think that's really what it comes down to. So it, it's easier for people to say, I'm going to share this aspect of me with this brand, as opposed to have to worry about what their privacy settings are for every post. Yeah, right, right. Good point. Good point. The future of all this stuff is pretty interesting. The market is huge. Anything you want to speak to as far as the demographics or just general trends or data? The OK Cupid guys, I know, uh, were, were like really mined the data a lot of the singles world and the dating world and all of this stuff. You know, it doesn't seem like anybody ever did much with that before and, until, you know, I've, I've read articles about them in various business magazines. You know, just what else do you want people to know? Maybe a question I haven't asked you. I think on the data side, I mean, we certainly look at everything you could probably measure. We've been surprised that the live streaming, that the broadcasting of live streaming, well, we, we wish everyone would, would want to do it more, I think. 18 to 34 is just a pretty solid age to live stream. And, and that's surprising to us because if you compare 18 to 24 to 25 to 34, those people live stream at roughly the same rate. And you might think live streaming is a young person's sport, right? Mm -hmm. And it's really not. So viewers tend to go across the spectrum, but the live streaming is really an 18 to 34 phenomenon. And once you get above 35, it does tend to diminish your likelihood to live stream. But there's a lot of people live streaming who are 30 and these streamers are, you know, getting really, really big followings. Interesting. Very interesting stuff. Give out whichever website you'd like. Tell people where they can learn more and wrap it up for us. If you'd like to learn more, you could download any of our apps. One in particular, I'd probably say to start with is Meet Me and you could find it at meetme.com or just type in Meet Me on App Store or Play Store. Good stuff. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening. Please be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any episodes. Be sure to check out the show's specific website and our general website, hartmanmedia.com, for appropriate disclaimers and terms of service. Remember that guest opinions are their own. And if you require specific legal or tax advice or advice in any other specialized area, please consult an appropriate professional. And we also very much appreciate you reviewing the show. Please go Go to iTunes or Stitcher Radio or whatever platform you're using and write a review for the show. We would very much appreciate that. And be sure to make it official and subscribe so you do not miss any episodes. We look forward to seeing you on the next episode.